Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Uh, across the council, they said if there'll be any error in this people, so if these, 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 so this, this is the white people doing other nations. If these niggas have any error in them, read. And they sin against their God, and they sin against their God. If they break their God's Sabbath, if they don't grow their beard, if they're running around sleeping with different women, not taking care of their kids, read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. That they gonna be destroyed as a people. Because when a man, a man lays with multiple women out of wedlock, what does he create? Single family homes. Right. Don't you think single family homes is a problem in a black community? No. I do. I do. Why? You got a woman that are raising men to try to be men, but they're becoming effeminate. They're emotional as hell. They're running around shooting up people. Give me Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. The Bible is a real book. The Bible has the key to all of our problems. The Bible is real black history, contrary to what y'all have learned. Read Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Isaiah! Chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people. As for my people, because God is only dealing with the Israelites. He right. said, as for my people, read. Children are their oppressors. He said the children are the oppressors. When you look in the West End, Bankhead, uh, Summer Hill, who are the, where's all the crime stemming from? Our people, right? What are the age groups? Teenagers. Young niggas with blocks with switches. They walking out here, bro. Read it again. As for my people, as for my people, come on. Children of the oppressor. Let's say, let's see why the children of the oppressors. This is the point. That's why men should not lay with a whole bunch of women out of wedlock. Because this is the result. Read. And women who over them. It says the children of the oppressors because the women are ruling over them. God says. Black man, you're supposed to rule your house. Right. You're supposed to command your house as Abraham did. Right. We have to repent. The world is turned upside down right now. Read it again. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. I'm going to tell you something, bro. For me, this your daughter. For me to see you with your daughter right now, that's an honorable thing in the eyes of God, bro. That's a rarity. That's a rarity, bro. God commends you for that. Are you married? All praise to the Most High. You said 25? Yeah. How old are you now? 20. Okay, I got something for you. That's, you might not be here then. I'm just keeping it with you. Bro. Read, read the last part of that. I'm going to keep it G. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. Oh, it says the women that are leading the children, they're causing them to error, right? Now, before, right, we just, you said that you're African American. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37 again. Because... God, you know, you know where that name came from, right? Do you know what that word African American stems from? All right, so Africa, right? That comes from a European that uh, colonized the land of Ham. His name was Leo Scipio Africanus, right? So he colonized that land. It's a white man. You got America that comes from another Italian navigator. Uh, my brother, that's what I'm talking about. You know something today. Okay, so how you got, how can we melanated people Descended from two white men. That don't make no sense. So who are we? Who are we as a people? We that name didn't come out to the 1980s. Before then, what were we? Afro Afro American niggas, colors, coons. I think in Africa, um, before the before like uh, colonialism came to Africa, I think the people of the African continent referred to themselves as the African continent, something like. That. You went to Islam, ain't you? You went to Islam? I'm actually You see? What's that? All right, I got something for you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Let me show you something. You ain't. I study Islam. I hear you, but you ain't none of that. What's your so called father? So called black man? Is my father black? So called black man, yeah. Okay, read Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28. What's the, the reason why I got two different answers from y'all is because we have been cursed as a people. If you ask the Chinese man, what's your nationality? He gonna say Ting Tong Tong Dynasty, whatever, whatever, it man, whatever. You ask, I'm keeping it G. If you ask a white man, what's your nationality? 
He gonna say, oh yeah, I'm from uh, London. My family are the Canterbury's. I descend from the Vanderbilts. But we, we don't know who the hell we are as a people. That's the problem, Deuteronomy 28.15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said, if y'all don't listen, something's going to happen. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded this day. God has commandments. We can't be lawless. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Well, God says that curses would come upon us and overtake us. Look around. Are we cursed? We got men laying with men. We got all, we got our sisters strung out on drugs, prostituting. This is bad. But it's because we don't keep God's commandments. Now you said you were African American. You said you were a Sikh. No, oh, I mean, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about who you are according to the Bible. Okay, same thing, right? Deuteronomy 28, 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. God said that the Israelites would become a byword. A byword is anything outside of your God-given name. You wouldn't be an African American. You would be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. God's greatest creation. You shouldn't be living like this. You sh your, your mind got to change, right? Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. That's right, you know what day it is. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. And I pray you brothers and sisters join me every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events channel where I will be reading your kind and inspirational letters, also thanking you for your kind donations, and also covering very important biblical information for the mental well-being of our 12 tribes. That's right, 12 tribes worldwide. So hope to see you then, every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events. Shalom. Over here, how do we get to America? Uh, Part of a cruise ship? From Some of us were transatlantic slave trade. Right. Did you know that that's right here in the Bible? You said we sold ourselves. All right, read that and give me Joel chapter three. But read that because because that that's what you call confusion, right? They say that we sold each other because we have similar resemblances of the real Africans, right? We're not, we're not African. We are the real Israelites, right? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says that the Lord will bring thee into Egypt again. So y'all familiar with the story of Moses, right? Through the spirit of the Most High, Moses parted the Red Sea and led the nation of Israel out, right? So we left Egypt. He says you were going to go to Egypt again. What does Egypt mean in the Bible? Exodus 20 and 2. You say Egypt is sin? There's some sinful things that go on in Egypt, but it's pretty specific. Exodus 20 and 2. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt means bondage. Bondage is another word for slavery. So he says you're going to go into slavery again. But let's see how. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's not clicking right here. Hold on, hold on. Real quick, real quick. Read that one more time. How are we going to get over here? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God said that we were going to come to slavery again on cargo slave ships for breaking the commandments of God. Read. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we haven't seen our homeland ever since then. Read. And there ye shall be sold. So when you got off the ships, what's going to happen? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. To your what? To your enemies. I'm going to tell you straight. Your friends wouldn't take you from your father and your mother and sell you fucking 100 miles away to another land. Your friends wouldn't do that. Your friends would not cut 
a baby from the mother's stomach and feed it to alligators. Right. It says your enemies, the so-called white man, the Asian man, the Arab man, they are your enemies. Right. Read. For bond men, for slave men, and bond will buy you. For when it says no man shall buy you, it's saying that no man is going to be able to redeem you. How do we know that? Because it already said that you're going to be sold. You got to think. We had Harriet Tubman. We had Nat Turner to join the truth. Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. We've had great men and women that have tried to free us from our captivity, but to no avail, we can't do nothing. We're still at the bottom. Read. Give me Joel chapter 3. Just to, just to prove the point that we're not real Africans. Read. Joel chapter 3 verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an holly. And so they go for wine that they might drink. Yay. And what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidane? So God is saying, what you got to do with me, O Tyree and Zidane? Those are the real African nations. Read. And on the coast of Palestine. On the coast of Palestine. Those are the Arabs, right? Read. Will ye render me a recompense? So God is saying, will you pay me back? How can you pay me back for what you did to my people? Read. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Okay, come on. Because you have taken at my silver and my gold and have carried it. He said you took my silver and my gold. We are God's silver and gold. We are the Israelites that they took and sold. We're not the Africans. Yes, sir. Give me Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Exodus 11 and 7. Let me get that. Exodus 11 and 7. Because you're worth more than just the dust as a dusty African. You're an Israelite. You're God's greatest creation. Read Exodus 11 and 7. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between Egyptians and Israel. He said, we, this is a difference. There's a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Let's see the difference real quick. Deuteronomy 76. We're going to see what the difference is between the Africans, the other nations, and God's chosen people. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. God says we're in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy means to be separate, to be chosen. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He said God chose us to be special unto himself. Let's see how special. Read. Above all people. What up? Below. Above all people. Equal. Above all people. God says that you, 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 y'all are above the other nations. Why isn't the Christian church teaching that? Why isn't the Christian church teaching the importance of who we are according to the people? You got to ask yourself that. Why we have we not heard that? Why haven't we heard that, right? Read that one more time. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Give me Hosea 1 and 10. Before the next teacher come up, Hosea 1 and 10. I want to show y'all something here today. Because you thought you were African-American. You thought you were an African-American. Let's see what the Bible says. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be at the sand of the sea. We're the sand of the sea. You can't measure it. They say that we're the minority, but we're really the majority. Read. Which cannot be measured, come on. nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. So in the same place where we said, you a nigga, you a coon, you an African American. This place right here where we at, read. There it shall be said unto them. Here in the West End, it's going to be said to y'all today, read. Ye are the sons of the living God. Y'all are the sons of the living God. Repent, come back to God's love. What was that at? <laughs> I was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. <laughs> then after class, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. What the hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. What is nation? Nation is family.
Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation 